Well, praise the Lord. God bless you all. We thank you all for joining us today here at New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. Let us open up this morning by entering into prayer. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Father, for this day. For this is a day that I have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will bless the Lord with all our soul and all that is within us. We bless your holy name, Father. We honor you. We come to worship. We come to give you glory and praise, Father, because we know that all things work together for good to them that love you, Lord, and for those who are called according to your purpose. So, Father, we enter to your gates with thanksgiving today. We enter to your courts with praise. For this is a day that thou hast made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I release your anointing right now, and I release the blessing of the living God to flow upon every heart and every soul under the sound of my voice. And God, I ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I ask you now, Father, that you would touch, and that you would minister to the people, that God, that you would show yourself strong on our behalf. Lord, it's in you that we live. It's in you that we move and have our being. It's not in our own self. It's not in our own ability. Lord, our confidence is not in ourselves, but our confidence is in the Lord God Almighty. We come to say, Father, we love you and we worship you. We come to give you glory, Lord. Yes, Lord. For it's in you that we live. It's in you that we move and have our being. Father, I thank you for this day. For this is a day that thou hast made. We thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Well, good morning to you. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining us today. And I tell you what, we've been, God has been dealing with our hearts upon with this message that we are dealing with the Elijah. Uh, the Elijah, uh, God is calling for the Elijah to come forth. Amen. But well, how do you know that Elijah came with a message? What was, do you know his message? His message was repentance. Amen. And so we're going to continue along that line today. We still talk about Elijah, but we take him from another angle. Because, see, we have to explore the purpose of Elijah. Not just talk about Elijah, but he, had, he came with a purpose. And he came with a message. Amen. And so as we... As we are here and as we receive what God is saying, then we will know and understand that God is showing us the way he's about to enter to the earth. Amen. For the second time. Hallelujah. Because I believe that God is calling for the Elijahs. I believe with all my heart. We at the end time for judgment is here. We are in judgment right now. It is not something that is coming. This is something that is here. And God is saying, prepare the heart of my people to be caught up with him. This is the message that God gave me at the beginning of the year. Prepare the heart of my people to be caught up with him. Amen. And then we talk about the sons of God coming forth. Then we talk about several other things, several other areas. Amen. And now we're dealing with the area of the repentance. Amen. God is calling us to repentance. But you know, I can't make you repent. God can't make you repent. It has to be a decision of your own heart. Amen. Because he said, he tells us in 1 John 1, 9, he said, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So if God is for us, then who can be against us? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we believe that God is going to show up, and he's going to show himself strong on our behalf. God bless you this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. So uh, we're going to continue along the line. But I got uh, one of my uh, people here, one of my men here, he plays a guitar, and I'm going to let him have a couple of songs today. Amen. And uh, Brother Kurt, he's a man that I've been known for a long time, and uh, he's with us today. Uh, he's a part of our ministry, he's a part of our church, and we're going to allow him the opportunity to share his talent today. Amen. With the Lord. Amen. Amen.
so uh, go ahead.
you're highly favored. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes. Praise God. Yes, yes. We have time for one more or no?
serve a good God, folks. The God that we serve is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask to think according to the power that works in us. And we are his people, the sheep of his pastors, and we just love him. Amen. How many of you love the Lord today? Yes, sir. Amen. We love the Lord today. Oh, glory to God. Okay. So we've been dealing with this message, and God has been dealing with my heart. You know, if you're preaching on something, you're going to start, it, it, it going to start affecting your life one way or the other. Yes. Amen. And so when I was preaching, a few days since I've been preaching on this message, it just been, it been dealing with my heart. And I believe that God is going to touch, God's going to minister, God's going to do something that's going to cause our heart and our understanding to become in life like never before. Amen. And so uh, we're going to continue in the way of the Lord. We're just going to continue to go in the flow the way God's leading us. I want you to open your Bible with me. Amen. How I many, you know, uh, Sunday was Mother's Day Sunday. Was it Sunday? Yes. Did y'all enjoy that? Yes. Yeah. No, uh, I did too. <laughs> I did too. Amen. And uh, today, after service, I'm going to take my wife and my daughter. We're going to go out for dinner somewhere because we didn't get a chance to do it that day. Oh, she want to go, oh, that's right, she want to go to the Russian festival. That's right. They have a festival downtown. Is it down? I'm going to, I'm going to be singing there? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, so there's a Russian festival downtown today. And where is it, where is it located? I'm going to give the address. See if you locate the address. Okay. Amen. But if it's what, if it's where it used to be, it's on T Street, isn't it? Okay, but that's where it used to be, and uh, huh? Yeah, it's in the park. Yeah, it's a big festival. It's in the park. It's not inside of the church. It's outside of the park. Yes. Amen. And so uh, they have scheduled me to come down there and uh, minister in song down there. So, and so we're going to be down there today at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Amen. So God is calling us. God is calling us the church. To repentance. He's calling us to set our hearts right with God. And, and as I was saying, when you when you when you deal with a message, when you deal with a message and uh, that message is uh, given by God, it's gonna affect your life. And so when I started preaching this message, well all of these messages that I've been preaching lately, God is dealing my heart. Because, see, if there's anything in your life, God, I mean, the spotlight is going to come on, especially if you're talking about sin. The spotlight is going to come on because, see, God wants you to be clean. If you're talking about something, especially pertaining to sin, God wants your life clean so that you can be a light that is shining on that darkness in the lives of those others, amen, that are, uh, uh, have sin in their lives. And so God began to deal with my heart. He began to point out every, every little thing. And I'm thinking, oh, God. I, you know, so I had, to, I, had to, I had to bring my heart and my life under subjection to the Holy Spirit just like you do. It's not something that I preach just because I can. It's not something that I do just because I want to. What I preach is because God has placed it on my heart because now is the time. Because when the Spirit of Elijah came, he came with a message. He did not come just to just uh, to get along with everybody. He came 
to, to bring the fathers back to the son and the sons back to the fathers. Amen. So there had to be a there had to be a remission of sin in order for that to take place. Amen. People had to come and realize that they had to repent. And so repentance was a great part of John the Baptist or the spirit of Elijah's message. Even at Zarephath, when the woman's son died, what did the woman say? You come to call my sin back upon me again? Isn't that what she said? And so the man, Elijah, he took the woman's son in his own hand and took him up this, upstairs and laid him on his own bed. And he stretched his body across this young man and he began to talk to God on this young man's behalf. And God granted him his life back. And he brought the child back and gave her, gave the child back to his mother. And the mother said, surely you are a man of God. Amen. Because of this, I know that you are a man of God. And so we know that God is who he said that he is. And, and, the, and the messenger that came, he was not sent on his own. He did not come on his own. He, he did not come because another man sent him. He came because God sent him. Amen. God sent him and he came with a message saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I want to turn your attention right now back to uh, uh, the book of uh, Malachi chapter 3 first. Malachi chapter 3. And look at verse number 1. Then we're going to go to chapter 4. Amen. And verse number 5 and 6. But right here, uh, uh, chapter 3, it says, because I want you all to hear what, what God is saying to us. Amen. Because when we, uh, when we hear and understand what God is saying to us, it shouldn't be a problem for us to acknowledge what God is saying to us. Now, notice what it says right here in verse number 1. It says, in those days came John the Baptist. Oh, that's chapter 3. I don't want this right now. <laughs> Amen. I want Malachi right now. There we go. Malachi chapter 3, and it says, verse number 1, Behold, I send, behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come. To his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, said the Lord of hosts. He shall come, said the Lord of hosts. Amen. So God is sending his messenger, and the messenger is coming with the message. And the message that he's coming with is saying, repent for the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. Amen. Now notice what it says right here in chapter 4 now. In chapter 4 in verse number verse number 5, he said, Behold, I will send you Elijah. So we see that the messenger is who? Elijah. He said, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of of that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Amen. So when the Lord comes, he's coming and he's coming at a time when people is not prepared. People are not ready. Just like in Matthew chapter 25, the, the ten virgins, only five of them was ready when the master, when the bridegroom came. Amen. So we have to understand that God has called us to repentance. If we don't understand, if we don't understand repentance, then we are, uh, I mean, we, 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 we messed up already. Amen. If we don't understand the, the message of repentance, we messed up already. I want to look, I want you to see here what it says right here again, verse number five. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of that of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their father. Amen. So he's coming with a message that's going to bring reconciliation. He's coming with a message that's going to bring restoration to the families. 
Amen. This is when the Lord told me when he first gave me this message and as I began to preach this message, the Lord spoke to my heart and even while I was preaching, he said, the problems are coming in. <laughs> the problems are coming in. So if you have problems in your family, in your family, your sisters, your brothers, even your children, amen, you can look to God and say, God, you said that the prodigals are coming in. And begin to bring it to his remembrance. How many of you know that God loved the backslider? Amen. Amen. He loved the backslider. The Bible says he's married to the backslider. Amen. And so when we're looking here, when we're looking at what God is saying to us, we should not question the fact that God has called us to repentance because repentance is what God is seeking to bring us to the area of new life. New life. Amen. Because when you repent, you begin to experience his life, his nature. Everything that he is begins to rise up within you. His life, his nature, his character. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> His character. Amen. And that's when the life and the nature of God is seen within us because they don't see us. They see his life. They see his nature. They see his character rising up in us. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And so God is saying that I'm going to send you Elijah. Isn't that what he said in verse number four? Verse number, verse number five? Uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 Behold I will send you Elijah the prophet Amen Now notice the Elijah, Elijah the prophet came He came with a message He came with a message He did not come to hear himself He came with a message And what was his message? Let's turn to the book of Matthew Since we're so close here Chapter 3 Matthew chapter 3 Amen. In Matthew chapter 3, and look at verse number 1. Now, John the Baptist, he came in the spirit of who? Elijah. And he came with what? He came with a message. He came with the message. Now notice what he says right here, verse number, verse number three, verse number one, I mean. Let's start verse number one. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in verse number five, verse number three says, This is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. Amen. Isaiah is, is the same as Elijah. Amen. So John the Baptist is the one that, uh, that, that, that he was referred to. That Elijah was referred to. Glory to God. And we have to, we have to see and understand this in order to in order to uh, uh, receive the benefits that God is speaking to our hearts concerning it. Amen. Amen. Because if we don't understand it, we will never receive the full benefit that God is speaking to us. That God is speaking to us. Amen. And so it says right here, glory to God. So it says right here, verse number four, verse number three again, it says, and this is he that was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, saying, the voice of one, what? Crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Make his path straight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God. And so when we, when we can see what God is saying to us, we have no reason to doubt what God is saying to us. There's no reason to doubt what God is saying to us because God is making it plain. He's making it real to us. He's showing us that our way out of our dilemma 
what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to desensitize us to what God is doing. He's trying to desensitize us to what God is saying. He's trying to cause us to be more focused on what's going on in the world than what God is saying. How's he doing it? He's doing it by, by, by murder. He's doing it by deceit. He's doing it by killing people. And what is that doing? That is taking the attention off of God and bringing it on who? On, the, on, on what he's doing. On his agenda. The Bible tells us that the John chapter 10 verse 10 that the thief coming not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. So he's out doing his job and he, while he's doing his job, he's causing everybody to stop focusing on what God has said and begin to focus on what he's doing. And what he's doing, he's stealing their attention off of, what, off of God's agenda and he's desensitizing them to the word of God, to what God has said concerning this time that we're in. And he's causing them to be more focused on what he is doing and causing them not to hear the spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Folks, we have to hear what God is saying in these hours. And the devil is doing all that he can to desensitize us from the voice of God. From the spirit of God. Amen. He's pumping doubt and fear in the heart of the people. When doubt and fear enter into the heart of the people, it causes them to become, because the word of God, become void in our lives. And if the word is void in our life, then where's the power that is in our lives? If the word is void, then there's no power, folks. There's no power if the word has become void. Then the word that brings life, he has lost its strength because we have yielded to a spirit that has desensitized us to the anointing. Instead of us going to, instead of us walking in the anointing, we are walking in fear and unbelief. Where is God? Oh, why is he letting all this happen to us? God is not letting it happen to you. The thief is out to steal, kill, and to destroy. He's doing his job. Your job is to begin to walk in this earth as children of Almighty God, allowing his nature to rise up within you. But you can't do that if you have allowed fear to grip your heart. Folks, we need to repent. We need to repent. We need to come back to the basics. Hallelujah. We need to come back to the basics because if we continue in the way that we are going, we will not see the kingdom of God manifest in our time. And God so desired to do that. He wants to manifest his glory right now. He wants the world to see that he is still God regardless of what's going on. He still wants the world to know that he's still God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. God just put a scripture in my heart. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 30. Oh. Mashiki la rabba soto rabaka. God just took the book of Ezekiel chapter 34. He just dropped it in my spirit. I mean, ha, shiki ma la basa. Hmm. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds. Oh, that's, that's, that's strong. Of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherd of Israel that feed themselves should not the shepherds Feed the flock. 
Should not the shepherd feed the flock? Folks, if you see your shepherd, your, your sheep is malnourished, they're, 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 they're not functioning properly as children of God, then there should arise a concern in your heart. Why is my sheep is not uh, 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 living as they should? Why are they not, why are they, why are they uh, lacking in some areas in their lives? Why is, are they living so defeated as children of God? Could it be that we as shepherds are not feeding them the proper spiritual diet and that we are so focused on our agenda, our business, our things and stuff that we refuse to hear what God is saying and we are male and we are not giving the sheep the spiritual food that is able to keep them Preach it, Pastor. Glory to God. And because they are being madly trished, they are being taken advantage of by the enemy, and they're being devoured. And God said, Woe to the shepherd that feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? Okay. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, God just put this in my spirit. I believe me. This is not something that I want to preach, but this is what God is saying to us. How can I not say what God is saying? Amen. Verse number three says, Ye eat the fat, ye clothe you with the wool, ye kill them that are fat, that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. But ye feed not the flock. Amen. And so it's a wonder why sin is so prevalent in the house of God. If the flock is not being fed properly, they don't understand that the wages of sin is death because they're so focused on other things rather than living a clean, holy life before God. Yeah. And so God is calling us to, to, to examine our hearts, folks. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us leaders to repent. Now, I, I, now, God just dropped this in my spirit today. I had no desire to go here. But I'm here now, and so let's deal with it. I was laying on my bed one day, and I was just, just, just minding my own business. Matter of fact, I was asleep. <laughs> minding my own business, laying up asleep. Then all of a sudden, I hear this, communi I hear this uh, 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 communication going on inside my heart. And God started talking to me. He was talking to me. Uh, he started talking to me concerning the shepherds. He started talking to me about the sheep. He was talking to me about the sin. And he was talking to me about the valley of the dry bone. And I'm thinking, Lord, why are you talking all this to me about? Why are you saying all this to me? I said, I'm not a pastor. Why are you talking to me about all this stuff? I wasn't a pastor then. And so I began to complain. God, why are you dealing with, why are you talking to me about it? I'm not a pastor. But he never... He never uh, 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 said nothing else about it. He just, he just, and I said, God, if that's in the Bible, then show me where it's in the Bible. Amen. So this is something that God placed in my spirit. It's been a while, but God placed this in my spirit, and he has not let me let go of it since. And I never, I don't, I, don't, I think I only preached on this like once. Amen. But the thing about it is that this is the season and the time that God is saying to us to preach the gospel. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke with all long suffering. All glory to God. We cannot allow ourselves to compromise when the world is going to hell. Facts. We have to preach the truth, folks. We have to preach the gospel because sin is knocking at every door of every heart, of every person that God created in this earth. And if we do not preach the truth, they will not hear the truth that they can repent of their sins. And so the Lord said, in verse number, number two, of Ezekiel 34, he says, verse number 2, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherd and 
of Israel prophesied, saying to them, Thus said the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? Mm. Oh, hallelujah. You know, you go to many churches and everything, you see, you see, everybody's catering to the shepherd because he set himself up before them as someone above them. And you are somewhat above them, but the thing about it is that, the thing about it is that if you have been set up as a shepherd, then you're not just a shepherd. You're not just someone there to have your needs met as a shepherd. It's time for you to begin to meet the need of the people that sit under you. If you're not meeting the need of the people that sit under you, then those people that sit under you, and all they're doing is, is, is helping you to meet your need, your family, what about their need? What about their family? Are you giving them what they need to sustain themselves? How many people go home hurt and more drained than what they was when they went to church? I've been there, folks. I've seen it all. Amen? And now God is saying, Woe be to the shepherds that feed themselves and should not the shepherd feed the flock. Tell the truth. We have to do our part as shepherds. We just can't look at them and think, oh, they coming out, oh, we're going to, oh, that come a good offering. <laughs> oh, that person there is loaded. <laughs> Folks, we can't look at money. We can't look at the offerings. We got to look to God. We have to look to God. God said, woe to the shepherds. Woe to the shepherds. He said in verse number 5, it says, and they were scattered. Who was scattered? The flock was scattered. Let's look at verse number 4. Let's back at verse number 4. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. Oh my God. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered, the flock of God became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. In other words, they became, you, you, you can walk out in the street, most of the people that you run into, a lot of them, they grew up in church. But some of them got hurt, some of them got wounded, some of them got bruised, and they did not Return to church because church was just what it says, church. Folks, church is more than going to a building. Church is when we begin to impart to people the word of God that brings healing to their souls. The word of God that brings deliverance to their hearts. The word of God that brings the that bring a person to a, a stable mindset. Amen. People are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. If you don't give them the knowledge that God has given you to help them to be strong, then they don't have no hope. All their hope is lost because they're looking to you for the answers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you don't give them the answer, then who can? We was at a meeting the other day, and the police and all were there, the cops and clergy, and we were all there in this meeting, and, 
And the question was, was asked the clergy, what do you think we can do about this? And what the clergy said that we don't know what to do. That's why you were there. That's what the clergy said. That's why you were the police. And the clergy, the, the police said, but we look into the church for the answers because you should have the answer. And the clergy said, Huh? They said, what answer? And the clergy said, what answer? Oh, wow. <laughs> He's the answer. You see, if the people is not being taught that we come with the word of deliverance, the word of healing, the word of peace, the word of love, the word of reconciliation, if we don't understand our part as shepherds, then how can we lead God's sheep? Mm -hmm. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Wow. God is God is saying that it's time for us to repent and turn our heart back to Him. A police officer asking the church, what can we do? How can we help these people? And the clergy said, you the police, you ought to know. And the police said, but, but you, the, you the church, you are the ministers of God. You should have the answer. We don't have the answer. This is what the clergy said. Mm. And I'm thinking, my God. What are these people learning? What are they teaching their people? My God, we're in the last days, folks. People are filling up churches because they have itching ears, not because they're going after the word. They're going after something that's going to make them feel good. For them to, oh my God, I mean get off of that. Because that, that, that really bothered, that really started my, 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 <laughs> that really started me to boiling on the inside when I heard that. Ministers, are they ministers? I'm not saying that all ministers are like that. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. So don't y'all take this and run away with the thing that I'm coming down on all ministers. I'm not coming down on all ministers. But there are those that that are talking like they don't know who they are. And God is saying repent. Mm. God is saying repent. Yes, sir. Oh my God. And so he says in, 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 in Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse number 6, he said, my sheep wounded, wandering through all the mountains and, and upon every hill, every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to the every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did the shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherd fed themselves and not and fed not the flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherd. I will and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherd feed themselves anymore, for I will deliver my flock from their hands, that they may not be meat for them. Oh. My. Glory. Mm -hmm. Glory. And as I was saying earlier, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night. He was talking to me about all this. And I said, God, where is it in the Bible? 
Show me in the Bible. And he showed me. He said, I want you to read your Bible in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33 through 37. And I stood up in my bed that night, and I would not go back to sleep until I had read chapter 33 through 37. And all, and all, and God just began to deal with my heart. And then he said, warn my people for the end of all things is at hand. And he began to tell me about the danger. Then he showed me a big old tidal wave. And I'm thinking, oh God, what a great move of your spirit. And God said, no, that is a move of darkness. And it's coming upon the face of the earth. He said, warn my people for the end of all things is at hand. Then the next time God spoke to me, he said, I was lying on bed asleep again, and I'm caught up in the spirit again, and now I'm seeing God right in the sky. I'm seeing a pretty blue sky, and I'm seeing these beautiful white clouds, and all of a sudden, I see the clouds begin to move back out of the way, and I see the handwriting of God begin to write in the sky. Warn my people, for behold, all things is at hand. People, I've seen the handwriting of God. And I'm telling you, but pre repent for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Judgment is upon us, folks. We must repent. We must begin to repent now. Ministers, shepherds, you need to begin to warn the people for the sin that they are committing. I don't know you and you don't know me. But God knows you and God knows me. And he said, repent. He's talking to the shepherds. Oh, my God. Are y'all getting anything out of this today? Yes, sir. I didn't ask for this. I didn't even pretend to study my Bible last night because I was working so hard in my house trying to get my house in order. But you know, this is a part of getting your house in order right here, what I'm preaching right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a part of getting your house in order. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, God got me clean up everything around my house right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, God got me clean up everything around my house right now. You know what that represents? God is calling me to clean up everything around my life right now. Hey. Cleanse it. Get clean, yes. You know why he's calling everybody to start cleaning up around him? Because he's coming, and he's not coming with a church with a spot of blemish. He's coming for a church without spot, without blemish. Tell the truth. Hallelujah. He's coming, folks. Ready or not, he's coming. Mm -hmm. You can be like the five foolish virgins if you want to, and you can just say, well, I'm just going to sit back and wait and see what's going to happen. You can walk around in a lukewarm state all you want to, but when he comes, if you're not ready, you're going to go knocking on the door. And he's going to say, I know you're not, for your work with all your dignity. Depart from me and be cast out of the outer darkness, where there shall be women and gashing of teeth. Mm. When those that were prepared, he was there. Come on in. You have been faithful over a few things, and now I'm going to make you rule over much. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> I believe I need to say something to the <laughs> next time. <laughs> oh, glory to God. But God has called us, folks. He's called us to repent. He's called us to repent. For this is a day that thou hast made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to give y'all too much because this is not something that you can digest all of, all of a sudden. This is something you got to meditate upon. This is something you got to meditate upon. Amen. But what I want to leave with you today is this. There was a man who had two sons. And the youngest son came to his father and said, Father, give me a portion of goods that fall to me. And he took everything that his father had given him. He went away from the father's house. He began to live a lukewarm life. He began to see the world as something 
of value to him. But once he got out there, he found out that in the world, there was a lot of headache, there was a lot of heartache, there was a lot of deceitfulness, there was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, of things you can get involved with. But at the end, he found out that all these things really was there to hurt him, not to be a blessing to him, not to help him, but to take advantage of him. The world wants to take advantage of you, folks. The world wants to cause you to miss out on everything that God has prepared for you to receive in this life. Amen. So listen to me right now. Don't listen to my mouth. Listen to my heart. Amen. Listen to my heart. God is calling us to examine our lives. He's called us to begin to clean up our lifestyle. If our lifestyle is not pleasing to him, if things around us is not pleasing to him, you know, God is not going to come and, and be involved in something that is nasty, something that's, that's garbage all around you. You need to clean up yourself. You need to clean up your vocabulary. You need to clean up your life. Amen. You need to uh, allow the Spirit of God to come in and do surgery on you. Amen. Because you can't do it yourself. How many of you have tried to quit sinning? How many of you have tried to turn away from a, a lifestyle that you was been, that you've been in for years and, and years? Yeah. And how many of you were successful in turning away from it on your own? No. Not one of us. If we could do it ourselves, we wouldn't need God. We wouldn't need Jesus to come and lay down his life for us. No, we could have did it ourselves. We wouldn't have to be here today talking about this. But because we can't do it ourselves, I'm here to tell you, that boy, he couldn't do it himself either. Once he walked away from his father, he was down on his knees about to eat the husk as a swine eat. Then he came to his senses. He got down to the bottom of the bottom, and then he about to eat with the pigs, and he finally realized the mistake that he made. Are you going to wait till you get that low before you realize your life is headed on a dead end collision with hell? Hell is opening up itself even wider to prepare room to bring all the souls that he gathered in. Are you one of those that are going to enter into hell fire? Or are you going to repent of your sins and turn your heart back to God? This young man, he saw his mistake. He realized that he was wrong. And he made a decision in his heart before he even got back home. The decision started. The change of his heart started right where he was. His change began at the bottom. While he was down there about to eat the husk. That's when he came to himself. And that's when he began to say, oh, look what I've done. I have sinned. And I must repent. And I will go to my father now. See, the, the, the repentance started right there. He didn't wait till he got back to the house of God. He didn't wait till he got back to his father's house before he repented. He repented right there on the spot. Mm -hmm. He repented on the spot, folks. And you got to see your error. And you got to see where your, where, your, where your turning point is. And you need to repent right now. You need to repent right now. Amen. And you need to say, Father, just like that boy did, he rehearsed in his heart, said, I'm going to go back to my father and say, Father, I sinned against heaven and against you. And I'm not worthy to be called your son, but you take me back. I'll be as a higher servant. He made up his mind exactly how he was going to ask God forgiveness. But remember, the forgiveness started when he came to his senses. His his reconciliation began when he came to his senses. And when the full restoration came is when he made it back to his father and was restored back to his father. And his father's heart was restored back to him. What was John the Baptist come for? He came to preach the message of repentance that the hearts would be reunited together. Oh, glory to God. So when we look at this scenario, we can see our own lives in this picture. And we can see that we need to repent and turn our hearts back to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now for what you're doing in the hearts of the people all around the world. God, I release your anointing right now in the name of Jesus to lift burdens all across this audience, to lift burdens and destroy yokes. I release the love of God, the Spirit of God, to move freely right now in Jesus' name, bringing deep conviction upon every heart. And Father, I pray that a spirit of repentance right now will begin to explode all across this land. I release it in the atmosphere right now, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, I'm calling for repentance. I'm calling for repentance because God, you are calling for repentance. So I'm calling for repentance throughout the land. Now, Father, I thank you that the angels take this message and go forth and share it with every person that they know. And that the people begin to repent and turn their hearts back to you. Father, and I pray for the shepherds that don't realize or don't know who they are. I pray, Father, that, that you would gently deal with their hearts to bring them to a place of repentance. That they, heart too, can be saved. Because you have given us the keys to the kingdom. Yes. We have the answers. Because you have imparted into our spirits. And that's why you said study to show ourselves approved. Our work under God need not to be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. We may not know all, Father, but we know enough to direct the people in the right direction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh God, you are the way, yes. the truth, and the life. Yes. And no man can come to you but by Jesus. And Jesus, we ask you now that you will give us. the plan to reach this nation. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God. Yes, thank you. God is calling us, folks. Thank you, Lord. God is calling us to repentance. Thank you, Lord. And this is the season that we will experience God's miracle working power. His healing power, folks. This is the season. Let's take a hold, let's take a hold of what God is saying. And let our hearts return to Him fervently in prayer. Because it's the fervent prayer of a righteous man that will better much. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and take about morning off. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. You said for us to give, and it shall be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall be in here to our book. The emeralds are right here if you need one in the basket here. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all get anything out of this today? Amen. I tell you what, it blessed my heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It blessed my heart.
number 30 says, Wherefore, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which the day is and Mary cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, you, for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Uh, sufficiency unto the day is eaten thereof. Amen. So God, he already knows, he already sees. He knows what he has placed upon your heart to do today. Like I said, I don't preach to try to manipulate you and give you. You will give when God speaks to your heart anyway. I don't have to do that. That's not my job. Amen. Yeah, go to the basket right there. She's going she to give you the basket, you're going to put it in the basket, you're going to hold it up before the Lord. Okay. Amen. And I'm going to speak a blessing over Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this past, this offering, Lord God, that you have given us today. We bless this offering. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I ask you, Father, that you deal with the people's heart across the internet, that they too will begin to plant their seed, Father. Go to my website right now, folks, plant your seed. Go to Last Urban Ministry and go to the donation button, plant your seed. Those of you that are given by the, by the sending through mail, I want you to go to, just write your, fill out your envelope on Last Urban Ministries, New Life in Christ Jesus Church, at P.O. Box 417913, Sacramento, California, 958 for one. We thank God for you, and we give God the praise of the Lord. Now, Father, we consider this seed blessed. We ask you to breathe upon the givers, Lord God, that they will not miss this seed that they'll plant, but that they will have more than enough coming back to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give them to the bosom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you. Amen. You may be here today and you say, Pastor, I never give my heart to the Lord, but that message really pricked my heart. And I want to, I need to repent today. I need to ask God to come into my heart. I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. Amen. If you're here today or you listen to me today and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or maybe you have, but you backslid and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, I want you to be bold today. And I want you to just make a, a firm decision in your heart and a commitment to God right now. Amen. A decision is a commitment that you got to make yourself. Amen. So let's do it today in our heart. Say this prayer with me. Say it from the heart right now with a full commitment to God. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin and I ask you to forgive me. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, and that you died for my sin. Today, I confess my sin, and I ask you to be the Lord of my life. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Amen. Hallelujah. If you said that simple prayer, folks, right now, God is touching your life. Change. Is entering into your heart right now. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're here today and you have a special prayer request, I will pray with you right now. You have a special prayer request, I will pray with you right now. Amen. Anyone? Amen. If there's no prayer request, then let us all stand. Now let's pray for those that are listening. Father, we pray we release our faith. Yes, Lord. With everyone that would hear this message, Father, that they would hear what the Spirit of God is saying through this message, yes, that they will begin to repent yes. for their sin.
Father, this is not a message that have come from men, but it's a message that have come from you. Touch the hearts of your people. And Father, I speak blessings over them now. I speak encouragement over their hearts right now, Father. Because where sin abounds, the grace of God do it much more abound. So I thank you for your grace right now. It rests upon all of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for being with us today. This is Pastor Larry saying, be blessed until we see you on the next time. God bless you. Bye-bye.